Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to this week's Impact Wrestling Media Teleconference. This is Ross Foreman. We're going to bring our special guest in right away. No Josh Matthews today. So uh, let's welcome to the call, Rich Swan. Welcome to the teleconference, and more important, welcome to Impact Wrestling. Hey, Ross. How are you doing? I'm doing great. More important, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, and uh, I am uh, happy to be here. I'm very happy to be on the uh, telecast, and I'm very happy to be in Impact Wrestling. Well, we, of course, are thrilled to have you. And t- tomorrow night on Impact, your debut match in Impact Wrestling. Talk to us about that. Uh, tomorrow night's going to be my debut, and it's going to be against the cult leader, Trevor Lee. Uh, the cult of Lee, uh, me and him, uh, we went at it. And uh, for an Impact debut, I uh, feel like I made one heck of an Impact And uh, it was definitely an eye-opener, and it definitely is going to open up the wrestling world's eyes as to what I can do. Well, let's uh, let's talk about it. You're you're certainly a a superstar, high-flying. What do you bring to Impact Wrestling, and what are you looking at down the line? Um, So what I bring to Impact Wrestling is something I like to call cards. Charisma, athleticism, and raw talent. And what I'm looking to do is to, for the lack of a better word, make an impact. I'm looking to excite the fans. I'm looking to put on some of the most amazing matches ever imaginable. I'm looking to win gold. I'm looking to, you know, help myself and impact get to another level. All righty, well... Lot, lots of uh, media have called in today wanting to talk to you from around the world. Um, we're going to open it up momentarily for the media questions. All I ask is that, uh, as always, please, one question and one question alone. We have a lot of media waiting to uh, speak to Rich. Please identify yourself and your media outlet. And uh, I would just like to state, uh, right now, um, my wife and I, uh, we're living a happy life, and right now, um we would like to, you know, forget about the past and focus on the present and our future and focus on positivity and, you know, have our careers, you know, be on the up and up. And um, that's all I have to say on that situation. You know. All right. Well, we we appreciate that. And I know uh, myself and the media will certainly respect you and, uh, uh, media will not be taking any questions uh, uh, regarding any uh, past situations. So uh, please let's focus on the future. He's got a, a great promising future, a lot of things upcoming. Of course, we have Slammiversary on July 22nd, and uh, it's going to be a fun one with uh, with Rich Swan on board now. So at that point, we will open up for media questions, star six to get in queue. Q&A session. Started. To ask your question, press star six. If you'd like to ask a question, your request has been received. You may now ask your question. Hey, Mr. Swan, it's James Walsh from the Wrestling Epicenter. Pleasure to talk to you today. Hey, James, how are you? I'm doing great. So I'm not going to touch on the situation at your request, but I did want to ask, there was reports that you were thinking about stepping away from the ring, and then you kind of almost immediately thereafter signed with Impact Wrestling. Um, How has the opportunity been for you at Impact Wrestling thus far, and what made you decide that you were going to continue on in professional wrestling? So, uh, you know, after, you know, everything, uh, I was booked for a line of several events, and, uh, You know, people on social media uh, didn't take too kindly to that. And, you know, I am a human being myself, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I kind of fell into a depression, you know, and I felt like professional wrestling for me uh, just, uh, you know, I just, maybe, maybe I should just step away and, you know, you know, try, try to figure something out uh, for myself. And um, me and my wife, we we talked it over, and uh, I went to uh, the New Orleans uh, WrestleCon, 
and I went to the Impact versus Lucha Underground, and uh, some of the things that I saw, Teddy Hart, Austin Aries, um, Scott Steiner, uh, Pentagon, Phoenix, all these guys going out there killing it, Brian Cage, some of the guys that I've come up with in this industry, seeing them kill it, and that feeling, that feeling never goes away, you know, and um, I just decided, you know, I got to I gotta get back in there, and I got to find myself, and lo and behold, Impact Wrestling, they gave me the opportunity, and they're giving me the chance, they're giving me my second chance, and I'm not going to let that fade, you know. Awesome. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Muted. Ryan Ryder for Main Event Radio. Rich Schwann, welcome to Impact Wrestling. I want to know which wrestlers are you looking forward to facing? I'm definitely looking forward to hopefully slapping it with Pentagon. Uh, I definitely want to have another rematch against Phoenix. Um, I want to have a match against Sammy Callahan. The thing with me and Sammy Callahan, we have come up in this industry. Uh, he he took me under his wing when I was young and um, helped me out in this business and uh, to see what he's turned into and to see him in Impact Wrestling, and now we're both here, uh, I think that we could have a match that would potentially blow the roof off of Impact Wrestling. And uh, that's the person I want to wrestle the most in Impact. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, this is Ian Carey from SEScoops.com. Uh, Rich, when the X Division began, you were only about 11 or 12 years old. I'm wondering if you were a fan of the X Division growing up and what competing in the X Division means to you. Oh, man, I was such a fan. Seeing guys like Frankie Kazarian, Chris Sabin, Alex Shelley, Sanjay Dutt, Jay Lethal. Man, the list goes on and on. Those guys used to kill it. AJ, of course, those guys yeah. used to kill it. And, you know, like at that point in time, uh, professional wrestling, there was only one company. And then to see these guys, you know, kind of throw out this style, this 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 cruiserweight style, this style that had been kind of forgotten about and abandoned and thrown on the national TV, like, yeah, it mesmerized me. And, you know, growing up, you know, aspiring to be a professional wrestler, you know, my size and stature, that was one of the goals, if not the goal, to be in the X Division, to be an impact, to to get the X Division championship. And, you know, uh, guys like... Uh, Matt Seidel, now in Impact Wrestling, another guy that, you know, I studied and looked at, and he's an amazing performer now. He's the exhibition champion. Oh, man, that's a dream right there for me. That means the world. Hello? Hey, Rich, this is Jeff from Icewap Podcast and IcewapPodcast.com. So, obviously, you love to entertain uh, the crowd. Uh, just just, just talk about your excitement right now for your debut match, and also talk about the atmosphere about the Impact Wrestling now that you are witnessing it firsthand. Oh, man, uh, the excitement uh, to have the world see this debut of mine from Impact Oh man, I can't even like like put in the words like especially given that opportunity to just kill it, and you know me and Trevor Lee again like I say like we went out there and we put it all on the line, um, man. And what can I say about the atmosphere? Uh, Impact Wrestling, like especially uh, at that at the college in Windsor, the crowd they were ecstatic. They were, like, so loud the whole night. Like, it was, like, the way – I can't even explain it. Like, they, they were hyped from, like, the first match to the last match. Like, there was no, like, loss of emotion. And, like, then, as in, like, the back, like, it's a family, man. And uh, I've grown up with a lot of the guys that, you know, like Eddie Edwards and – Sammy Callahan and uh, Moose, like I, I've come up with these guys, and you know it's it's like a reuniting for me. Thank you, Rich. Very happy for you. Thank you.
Rich, we're going to go to an email question from uh, Tifu Reads Books. Would like to know, I dig the hairdo. What's the story behind it? All right. So the story behind my hair, oh, man, there is a legend named Minoru Suzuki. And, man, I've always been a fan of his hairstyle. I always loved it, the crazy designs, the crazy, you know, it's shaved bald in the front with the designs. But, oh, wait a minute. If you look at the back of his head, he has this long ponytail. And, oh, and uh, there's another guy named Shingo Takagi who used to beat me up all the time in Japan. But when we became a tag team, uh, when I was in the uh, stable of Junction 3, he had the same like type of hairdo, like a mullet, but crazy blonde designs in the side. And he decided, hey, Rich, you should get that as well. We'll form nice as a nice tag team. And it was kind of like paying homage to those two guys and uh, just sporting a new look for my debut. I guess a logical follow-up question, would you ever team with uh... – DJZ, you guys be the, the hair hair combination. Oh, man, I'd love the team with DJZ. I'd also love to wrestle DJZ. I think we would put on an amazing match. Hey, Rich, this is a big fear representing the Eagle Total Channel from Israel. How are you doing? I'm very well. How are you? I'm good, my man. Thank you. Uh, we saw you getting in the ring with Austin Aries at uh, one night only zero kills. Uh, do you think uh, a rematch is that something you consider in the future and maybe a an, uh, world heavyweight title opportunity? You know, uh, that night was uh, an amazing night for me. My my uh, Impact Wrestling, you know, debut, uh, if you would, one night only debut. And uh, I got an Impact Championship title shot against a man that, um, again, I've grown up with and a man that I've watched and studied since the early 2000s. And uh, to get in the ring with him that night was amazing. And I definitely feel like if I worked my hardest and got up, you know, to the status, I definitely feel like there's a, a future opportunity um, for the Impact Championship against Austin Aries or whomever is the champion. But I hope it is Austin Aries because me and Austin Aries, we've got uh, that relationship. And when we get into the ring, it's it's definitely a Donnie Brook. It's a brawl. And um, it's also a technical, you know, a technical a match that, you know, you don't want to miss. So I definitely hope and look forward to an opportunity with Austin Aries again. Thank you very much, and I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. First, we're going to go to a question from Tony Quant at the Daily Mirror over in the UK. Awesome. He, he would, uh, can you explain what it was like walking into a new locker room and how, uh, how were you received when you arrived in Impact? You know, uh, when I walked into the Impact locker room, uh, for – the lack of a better word or, or, or term, like it, it just felt like I was walking into my home because like I've uh, said before on this interview, a lot of these guys I've known for a very long time. And uh, it was like they brought in family and they assured me that, you know, this is a place where we're going to, you know, focus on entertaining these people and putting on the best show that we can possible and, you know, and look forward to growing as a company as a whole. And they accepted me in this company. Hi, Rich Lewis from the Tap Out Wrestling Podcast Network. How are you doing today? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing good. Welcome to Impact. I'm glad you're uh, with Impact Wrestling now. A uh, question. Um, I know you had uh, the match with Austin Aries at Zero Fear. Uh, unfortunately, you weren't uh, successful. But do you have another title in mind? Do you want another shot at the world title? Or do you have maybe the X Division title in mind? Uh, what's, yeah. what's the short range and long range goal for you? Uh, you know, I definitely, as a, a goal of mine, definitely since I was a young child, I always wanted to be the 
X Division champion, seeing guys like AJ Styles, Jerry Lynn, Low Key, Sanjay, like Jay Lethal, Amazing Red, like the list goes on and on. I always wanted to, you know, set, like set foot in those ways and, you know, have those matches and, and, you know, have that championship. That's definitely a goal of mine. And, you know, one great always said, if you're not in the business to become world champion, then why are you in business? Definitely a long-term goal in Impact Wrestling is to be the top guy in Impact Wrestling. And, you know, just because of my size and stature, I want to show the world that it does not matter what trials and tribulations you've gone through and, you know, whatever size you are, you can be the best and the very best and the very top guy. That's my long-term goal for Impact Wrestling. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Rich, I will tell you, you're, you're generating some very, uh, very unique questions. Uh, we get one from Andrew Reed. He'd like to know, who taught you to dance, and who on the Impact roster would you like to have in a dance-off? Oh, man, that is an amazing question. So... No one taught me really how to dance. I just kind of, like, picked it up. And, uh, well, you know what? The TV tube watching Two Cold Scorpio and Marcus Alexander Bagwell, those two guys, they taught me how to dance. And you can see it in my dancing. Iceman King Parsons, yeah, those guys, they taught me how to dance. Um, but uh, as of who I would love to have a dance-off with, um, Man, there's two people, and one would shock you. One I'd have, I'd love to have a dance-off with Grado at some point in time. And the second, I'd love to have a dance-off with the machine, Brian Cage, because uh, just, you know, I just want to see, like, what he can do, like his move, like his body, you know, and I just want to see if he can break it out. It's been rumored that he can bust a spin a out, but uh which is a break dancing move for, you know, the people that don't you know know that. <laughs> All right, well I'm sure that will be a very entertaining uh little thing with you and uh certainly with Grado if not with Brian Kate uh, oh. as well. Oh yes, sir. Uh hey, uh this is Viju from Sports Kira in India. Welcome to Impact Wrestling, Mr. Ritzvan. Uh, my Thank question you. is, how, exci- how excited are you for Slammiversary, and who is your dream opponent for Slammiversary? I'm very excited for, you know, uh, Slammiversary, and uh, I'm excited to be here in Impact Wrestling. And if I uh, am fortunate enough to get an opportunity on Slammiversary, uh, I'm just going to throw an off-the-wall person uh, out here that, you know, Jake Christ, I feel like he is one of the greatest wrestlers uh, in this industry today. And I think uh, me and him would set the world on fire uh, if we could have like an opening match at Slammiversary or something like that. I'd, I'd love that. We'll go to a question from uh, Yagshi Grader. What, what is your favorite cookie? What's my favorite cookie? My favorite cookie, uh, if I'm uh, eating healthy, it's Winnie and Larry's um, oatmeal raisin cookies. But if I could be honest, I'd love to uh, stop by the McDonald's and get the uh, oatmeal raisin cookies from there. Those are the absolute best. They're baked to perfection. They're tasty and they're scrumptious. <laughs> All right, well, we'll follow that up with a question from uh, Michael Barnes. What is your opinion of the Impact Tag Team Division, and is there anyone you would like to team with? Uh, My opinion on the Impact Tag Division, uh, it's amazing. Um, You've got LAX, you've got DJZ, uh, and uh, Andrew Everett. Uh, those, Those two tag teams right there, just explosive, amazing. Some of the matches that they have put on trading the tag team championships back and forth um, have been phenomenal. I've seen some things in their matches that I have never, ever seen 
in my life in this business before. And I've been in professional wrestling now for a little over 10 years. And, you know, you see something new every day. And, uh, but as of who I would love to team with in, uh, impact wrestling, um, it would be, uh, probably Desmond Xavier, um, a lot in his, uh, wrestling career. I see myself, and uh, I think he's uh, one of the brightest stars in this industry today. And uh, I'd love to uh, team with him. I think we'd come up with a lot of crazy combinations, and we'd fit well. Hi, Rich. This is VQ with the Impact Lounge podcast and V2 Wrestling. So in 2018, my favorite thing that Impact has done has been the uh, burial of Rosemary. What's been your impression of the work your wife has done so far that segment in particular and what were some of the things she told you about the company um when she was first contracted and before you came aboard you know i think all the things that she's doing in impact wrestling is unique and amazing and it's some things that you know haven't really been touched with in the business uh before um and the segment with the the burial and uh the mist and the flame that that was crazy it was amazing um like i i i think like there's there's nothing like you know what she's doing you know like i i can't even explain it um it's like a a phenomenon and and people if if i could just give a spoiler at impact wrestling she and her 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 zombie her zombie brides um they were corralling around the ring and they were slow and they were moving with these mannerisms and the crowd was mesmerized and by the time they got into the ring and by the time she was in the middle of the ring without having to do a single action the crowd already was chanting this is awesome so when you can do that in this industry without move, like without without you know n- any physical action you have something very special um and I'm sorry uh what she told me about the company what she told me about the company uh when she first uh, signed she said it was uh you know everybody was you know a family and it, and like I said before and she already knew like a lot of the people that work there you know we we were mutual friends with and we just figured you know it'd be the right move all right thank you thank you thank you just a uh, uh, quick alert for the media who have sent me a few text messages yes you may get back in queue for a second question can you say that one more time I'm sorry uh, that was that was just a message for some of the media out there. Oh, gosh, yes. Hey, Rick. Uh, I was curious, what is your contract status like with the company? Have you, have you signed a deal? Is it short-term, long-term, or is it kind of seeing how things work out for both sides? So, currently, I, I have been uh, offered a contract, and uh, – we we are uh, looking to do business together, and, you know, we're going to see where the future takes us. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Rich, this is Jeff uh, once again from Myself Podcast and MySelfPodcast.com. What have you taken from being uh, at uh, WWE that you've taken out to Impact Wrestling and you've taken it now to other places that you've wrestled at? What's the one main thing that you've learned from there? Uh, one of the things that I've definitely learned was uh, storytelling, you know, in 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 my wrestling, uh, making everything mean the most and making the most out of everything that you're doing in that ring, and uh, trying to give, you know, the fans, you know, their while worth their their money's worth. And uh, that's one thing that I've definitely taken from the World Wrestling Entertainment uh, to every single company and every person that I've wrestled. I've applied my style and, you know, the way I've been, you know, taught to the world of wrestling. Thank you. Thank you. 
Push we go to a uh, question here from Jerry P. You have a very unique style. What wrestlers would you say you've tried to mold yourself after? You know, this is uh, going to sound, you know, it's crazy. I'd, mo I'd say that I'm mold after, like, guys like Hayabusa, Ice King Parsons, RV, and um, Bret Hart, like, like, for, like, I don't know. Like the the technical standpoint, like that's what, like how I kind of like tried to mold myself. Like RVD, like oh he was always so laid back and chill, even though he just did something crazy and amazing and to the crowd, <laughs> they're, they're thinking like I can't even fathom doing that. And he he's got his hands out by his side with a smirk on his face. So uh, Hayabusa with his reckless abandonment and Sabu as well. Like, those two, like, with their reckless abandonment, I also put that in my style of wrestling, like, with the crazy uh, flips and, and dives over the, the top rope. And um, the hit, man, like I said, like, for the, the technical standpoint, those are the kind of guys that I've molded myself after. Uh, hey, Rich. Uh, this is Richard from Sportskira again. My question is, how different will the Ritz one of Impact Wrestling be as compared to what we're used to seeing? There's not going to be too much difference uh, unless uh, something uh, makes me change or makes me snap in a certain type of way. Uh, but uh, there's always going to be the happy, dancing, vibrant, smiling Ritz Swan. Uh, that you're used to seeing, the rich one that you were used to seeing on your TV screens uh, is going to be on pop, on impact, and going to be lighting the skies up again. Rich, Chris Featherstone, Pancakes and Power Slam Show. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. All right, so uh, my question for you today is, um, throughout the history of pro wrestling, uh, there has been, within TNA, in the 11 years of the TNA World Championship, there's only been one black champion, Bobby Lashley, uh, throughout NWA before it uh, merged to TNA. Uh, decades later, our truth was champ, and many people would argue that there has been a black WWE champion. What are your thoughts on just the the, lack, the deficit of black world champs in the WWE and how uh, you plan to break that barrier if if that's your goal? You know, um, I look at it like this. Um, back in the day, it was definitely, it, 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 you know, it's, it's such a touchy subject, you know, because I, I don't look at the world and race, creed, stature, you know, sexual orientation, like, um, the fact that, you know, there, there has been so little, uh, African-American black, uh, world champions in the industry. Um, it, I wouldn't say it's sad, but it, it is a little bit. Um, and how I plan to break that, uh, barrier and mold is for people to not look at me as I'm, just like a black man or an African American, I'm a professional wrestler. Just like Matt Seidel's a professional wrestler. Just like Andrew Everett's a professional wrestler. Just like Moose is a professional wrestler. We're not defying each other by color or anything. We're de defying each other by skill. And uh, but if I ever was to uh, win a world championship and I was looked at uh, in that light, uh, I would definitely embrace it as well because it it would be very special for, you know, African-Americans to have uh, a role model or have, and I'm not saying that is necessarily myself, but it would be awesome to see young African-Americans being able to look up to uh a, a world champion, you know, somebody that, you know, hey, that person's just like me. Um, but uh, at the same time, we 
as people should try to break away from uh, the labels and come together. Fantastic. Thanks for your input. Best wishes to you, Rich. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Rich, we're going to go to a question that uh, comes in anonymous. I'm not sure if that's Mr. Anonymous or Mrs. Anonymous, but uh, came in, uh, how long have you been playing the guitar and what is your favorite band? Uh, I've been playing the guitar since I was about seven years old. I never had a lesson. I played by ear. Um, and my favorite band is so hard. Like I range anywhere from Alice in Chains, Pearl Jam, to uh, like Amity Affliction, uh, Crown the Empire, Kill Switch Engage, like Alice Cooper, like anything. Like I just love music. Uh, that's definitely my second passion, uh, music. Hi, Rich. David Dunn with the New Zealand Pro Wrestling Informer. Uh, you've been in the ring with Austin Aries, and you mentioned coming up with guys like Moose. So I just wanted to know, um, who do you think is going to be victorious at Slammiversary? What's your take on the Slammiversary main event between Aries and Moose? Man, you know, uh, I'd have to give it to Moose, man. Um, I've been in the ring with Austin Aries, and I've been in the ring with Moose. And Moose is just a different breed of athlete. The guy is over six foot tall. He's, you know, 250 plus pounds. And if somebody's sitting on the top rope, uh, for many people that don't know, when somebody's sitting on the top rope, that's high. And this boy, he gets a vertical leap and his feet will leave the mat and will touch somebody's face when they're sitting on the top rope. That's a monster. And uh, Austin Aries, though he is one of the greatest, uh, his words, the greatest man that has ever lived, <laughs> uh, I just don't think he can match that. But I think, nonetheless, they're going to put on an amazing match and one to talk about. Hi, Rich BQ with the Impact Lounge and B2 Wrestling again. Um, you mentioned uh, going through a depressive state earlier, and um, depression is also obviously a, a big issue in the world. And I think it's, I personally think it's a bigger issue amongst wrestling fans than than, than people really realize. But what would you say? What would you say to someone going through um, some of the feelings that you were going through with the you know the situation you discussed earlier? Like, how how would you recommend um, just someone get through? you know, being maybe in a similar depressive state? You know, I'd suggest, you know, doing, finding a lot of inner peace, meditation, praying. I'd suggest um, finding the people that, that matter to you most and that you hold near and dear and that uh, you feel comfortable talking to about, like, your thoughts, uh, therapy. Um, I, I'd, I'd suggest, like, going to your family and, and and, you know, anything that, you know, is negative energy in you or, or anything that makes you feel negative, find a positive out of that negative and turn it, you know, and bring yourself. And, you know, with guidance from people, you know, you'll know that you're not alone. And uh, that's that's definitely what helps me. Uh, just, you know, talking to the people that have helped me and, you know, through some of the toughest times in my life, you know, uh, and uh, that's definitely what I would suggest. And just don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to tell people that you're depressed or anything like that because, you know, that's going to, you know, be inside you more. That's going to hurt you more. All right. Thank you for taking that question. Okay. Thank you. Which we're going to go to a question from Stephen Hall. I'd like to know what match type that you have not done yet would you like to do and why? Uh, I would love to do, and this is going to sound crazy, I'd love to do, like, for the lack of a better term, 
uh, death match, a hardcore match, a uh, an extreme match, uh, because I, I've I've never gotten the opportunity to show that artistic side and wrestling of myself and guys like Cactus Jack and and Abyss, Sabu, uh, Hayabusa, uh, uh, some of the greats like Onita and and you know. Mr. Pogo, those are those are guys like that, you know, I also grew up watching and it was a side that I also wanted to test out and see and uh in the right setting and in the right with the right appropriate, you know, story, I'd love to do a match like that. And uh, for the reason why, I, I just want to show my diversity in my uh, art, 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 my diversity in professional wrestling and my artistic side. Hey, uh, this is Riju from Sportskira again. So you mentioned Sammy Callihan is a friend of yours. What do you think of how infamous he's become as a performer and how much controversy he's creating with his character? You know, I think it was inevitable. He's always been one of the most charismatic uh, professional wrestlers that I've ever seen. The first time I ever seen him was uh, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in the ECW arena. And, man, I was blown away. I'd never seen a guy with so much intensity and so much like, like, like it's hard hard to explain. And that translates to today. Like, he's older now and, and, I think he's matured, and I think he's, you know, people could say what they want to say. Oh, he's dangerous, this, this, and that. But he generates some of the biggest buzz in our industry today. People beg and and want for Sammy Callahan, and uh, I think he has definitely made himself a phenomenon in our business. A question come in from Sifu, who would like to know, if you weren't a professional wrestler, what occupation would you have taken up? Uh, so I would have uh, probably been, um, hmm, I probably would have been a, a singer, tried to, uh, you know, focus on my music career or my music that I play, uh, like, or uh, I would um, be, I, I went to school to be, uh, I, uh, I went to school to be like an EMS, like I was a protective service agency. I went to a vocational school and then I got an alternative diploma. Uh, and I probably would have been a police officer or a firefighter or a coroner or something like that. But. Um, I finished school early and, you know, became a professional wrestler. Hi, Rich. Lewis here again for the Tap Down Wrestling Podcast Network. Uh, if there was a second um, Impact Wrestling with the Lucha Underground show, what would you like to face off against in Lucha Underground and why? Hmm. Man, you know, one guy I'd like to definitely go one on one with. Uh already um I've I've gone against Phoenix, which is going to be coming up here on Impact Wrestling. You guys are gonna definitely wanna check that out. Uh we fought forever. Um but um another guy I would definitely like to step into the ring with would be King Cuerno, uh from Lucha Underground. And uh, some people may not know who that is in Impact Wrestling, but I would definitely love to wrestle him. Last System X wants to know, who would you team up with to take on LAX? Um, I definitely uh, would team up with Desmond Xavier because uh, seeing some of the moves that uh, LAX does, uh, like... Man, the the moonsault off the back, the the springboard moonsault combination that they do, um, man, I think that being Desmond would light the world on fire with those boys and do some of the craziest things that, you know, professional wrestling has yet to see. 
All righty, Rich. Well, with that one, we will wrap it up for this week. Uh, we'll give you the floor here for a final thought. Awesome. Uh, thank you for having me here uh, on the telecast, and uh, I hope you guys check me out on Impact Wrestling on Pop. And uh, if you want to get at me on Twitter, it's at Gotta Get Swan. And uh, just know that we're going to party all night long. All righty, Rich. Tomorrow night on Impact, it's Rich Swan against Trevor Lee, his debut match on Impact. Certainly looking forward to that. And uh, hopefully down the line we can get a uh, little dance off with you and Grado. <laughs> awesome. All right, Rich, thank you so much. Media, thank you very much. We'll talk to you next week. Hey, thank you for having me. Q&A session is over. Goodbye.